This is CBC Television. Afternoons are golden. It'll take a while to warm up, but once I get going, I can turn your top soil till the cows come home. The Golden Girls, five days a week. We are CBC Cape Breton. The county of Cape Breton wants Fort Petrie and the South Bar Battery blown up. The society wants them preserved as historic monuments and tourist attractions. Joan Weeks has the story. Some of the most critical battles of World War II were fought just off Canadian shores in the North Atlantic. Sydney's Harbor played an important role in those battles. All of the Canadian convoys left from one of two Nova Scotia ports, either Halifax or Sydney. To protect the port, 12 fortresses were built along the shoreline. During the war, people saw these fortresses as the only thing between them and the German U-boats. They had good reason to feel that way. German submarines constantly patrolled just off the coast. In 1942, the passenger ship Caribou was sunk in the Cabot Strait. Today, the forts that so proudly guarded our harbor are rusty, decayed, and covered with graffiti. They've become an eyesore. Even worse, some are dangerous, with openings into shafts that drop 30 or 40 feet. That's why many people want them destroyed. Now, the same army that built these forts has been asked by the county to blow them up. If the Department of Defense gives its approval, Fort Petrie will be destroyed this year. South Bar next year. Stéphane Ouellette and Brian Tennyson are members of the Chapel Head Society. It's a group of citizens that are opposed to any plans to destroy the forts. Well, they are the remnants of uh, a very important role that Sydney Harbour played in both world wars. Um, and we, we would like to see them preserved, and at least one of them developed, uh, so that people will be uh, aware of their heritage. And um, we also think, of course, that they, will, they could be valuable as tourist attractions. How would you respond to the people who live around here that are concerned about their children and the safety of, of maybe falling into some of the underground tunnels here? I think there is a concern about the safety of these um, you know, establishments, but what we are willing to do is that if we acquire the land, we will make it safe and we will clean it up. I mean, I can understand that people around here or afraid if you if you fall down one of those elevator shafts you either drown or you could break your leg or what have you it's important to make these places safe but to destroy them there's no sense in doing that the society realizes that financially it would be impossible to restore all the sites but it would like to see the smaller ones at least cleaned up and marked with plaques the society has special hopes for chapel head however this fortress in Sydney Mines is still in relatively good shape and it could be restored fairly easily. But what we would like to do is to uh, completely restore it to uh, World War II uh, condition and uh, animate it with uh, people on site and, and develop it into uh, a significant historic site commemorating the role of the harbour and the, uh, the merchant marine and uh, things like the sinking of the caribou, the whole uh, role that we played in the Battle of the Atlantic. To restore the Chapel Head site alone would cost close to half a million dollars. No one knows just how much more it would cost to maintain all the other sites. None of the money has yet been raised. Cape Breton County Solicitor David Muse says keeping all the forts is just impossible. Has there been any attempt by the county to try and find money to maybe maintain the others or, or to do anything with those forts? The closest we've come to doing anything is to have the cooperation of the militia to tear them down. We've been unsuccessful in getting money to restore them. So there has been an effort, I guess, to look at it or consider it. We've looked at it. We've considered it. They've been thoroughly inspected, and most of them have been uh, condemned as unsafe. And the only practical solution is, is short of finding the funds to completely restore them, then to either make them safe or to demolish them. If the Chapel Head Society could come up with the funds to save the forts by this summer, then the county says its decision to destroy them would be reconsidered. But leaving them in their present state any longer just isn't acceptable. At Fort Petrie, I'm Joan Weeks. We can't afford this sort of, you know, show business. We have to face realities. You're absorbing the events around you, and then you're trying to reflect them to the country at large. A lot of it is just instinct. It's a, a chance to be there with a ringside seat when history is being made. That's a lot.
lot of teamwork on the part of the reporters, anchors, editors throughout every day. Peter Mansbridge in the National News Team. What it takes to cover the news. They say to really know someone, you've got to walk a mile in their shoes. Well, now I'm inviting you to do just that every week. You'll get an entirely new perspective on the wonders of creativity with fascinating profiles and performances by the famous and the slightly out of step. Plus, special events you won't soon forget. I'm so excited, I can hardly keep myself together. Adrian Clarkson presents on CBC Television. Gotta run. Beginning June 13th. Witness, CBC's new forum for independent filmmakers. Witness, modern day explorers search the world for the stories behind the headlines. Witness, presented commercial free, followed by a panel discussion. Witness, starting June 5th on CBC. June 6th. I'll take mine off if you'll take yours. CBC salutes the great names in hockey. Thank you very much. In a celebration of excellence. I'd never last an entire show. With host Alex Trebek, the 1990 NHL Awards, June 6th. Is time running out on our country? Maybe this is one night of television you can't afford to miss. Tomorrow night, the National and the Journal join forces to ask the question, is Canada drifting apart? Peter Mansbridge and Barbara Frum will explore the nation's growing anxiety and unease. Is Canada drifting apart? A National Journal inquiry, beginning tomorrow night at 8 on CBC Television.